Welcome back everyone, Jug here, and in this video I'm going to try to answer just about every question that I've been asked about building in Fallout 4. Many of you may already know most of these tips, but I felt it important to address all of these questions in a video made specifically for anyone having trouble recreating some of the buildings you've seen on my channel. Some of these tips are somewhat basic, and some are actually quite advanced. There is no specific order to these, but I will place shortcuts in the description below so that you can easily skip straight to what you're looking for. Before we get started, it's important to note that everything here is done on PlayStation 4 with no mods, so I can't make any guarantee that what you'll see in this video will work on Xbox or PC, but for the most part, all of this should be fairly similar on all three platforms. And with all that being said, let's get started. While not required, I highly suggest picking up the first rank of the local leader perk. This will allow you to share resources between settlements by assigning a settler to a trade route in your build menu. You can force the top part of a foundation through the ground by snapping it to another piece. By placing a floor or something similar near a water purifier, you can hold the activate button down on it and drag the purifier to dry land. You can stack foundations vertically by using stairwells. If a piece is having a difficult time being placed, try placing other pieces around it first. If you're having trouble placing a piece with the build menu, try picking it up manually. If you suffer from any frame rate issues or screen skipping like I am here, try unplugging any terminals connected to your power. Try to remove any clutter like lights if you're having trouble placing doors. If you look down and don't move, you can spam wood floors to stack vertically. Removing a few floors will make it easier to snap to. You can do this with small floors too, but as you can see, they don't actually line up perfectly. The way I make steps is I'll take a wood floor and just move it right between another set of wood floors so it's actually uh, offset by a half step as you can see here then I'll take those pieces and bring them out in a step pattern and then once I have both sides I can use those as guides to drop these foundation blocks in just fill in the sides and you'll have some stairs or steps. You can force foundations through other foundations by snapping them. Selecting any floating floor will cause it to drop straight down. If the floor is too high, you won't be able to do this. You actually have to get above it. You can do something similar to this and just go up one more level by using a stairwell and then looking straight down at the floor. When trying to place a piece more precisely, use your right thumbstick instead of your rotation controls.
The bottom of a prefab won't snap to the side of a foundation, but you can bypass this using stairwells. Many objects like turrets can be stacked inside of one another using rugs and mats. If noise is no concern, then small power generators will offer more power per space used than a large power generator. This is not really a big deal though since you can stack generators inside of one another. Wall lights will fit on more than walls. You can actually place them on statues, potted plants, and even some furniture. With patch 1.03, the issue with lights not working was supposed to be fixed. If you're still having issues with it though, you can just go back, find your connector, remove it for just a second, place it right back, and your light should work just fine. Abernathy Farm has the largest height cap of any settlement in Fallout 4. In some places you can build up to 22 stories high. While that might be the highest, the actual widest space belongs to Spectacle Island. Not all settlement size limits are equal. Some settlements that have a lot of objects already placed in them, the size bar is actually going to be a lot higher than if you was to go to some place that didn't have a lot of objects in them. Keep all terminals on their own power source so that when you change something, it doesn't change everything. If you're looking for a delay that isn't on the terminal, like a three quarter delay, you can stack a quarter second delay and a half second delay together and they'll work out just like a normal three quarter delay. Counters are not broke. They actually have to be placed right after an interval switch so that every time the green light on an interval switch comes on, you'll see a rotation on the power counter. The welcome mat inside of your resources miscellaneous tab is a great way to get back to the top of a building you've been working on. Not only are rocket turrets bad for your health, but they're bad for your settler's health as well. When holding the activate button down on an object, you can move it forward, back, and left, and right without moving. This can make it easier to get to hard to reach places. Holding the activate button down on multiple objects allows you to pick them all up at once and then push them into other objects. You can see here on the left and right side that parts of these actually passed through the other wall. You can create false floors by taking an object such as a desk or something that's flat on top and then just moving them in close together using rugs. You can then go around those objects, fill in the sides with some small wood floors. And then on the end, if you'll just take the small wood floors and move them to the side a half step like this, you can use that to then just snap a prefab to the end 
and use that as the doorway to your new floor. You can then fill in the top and the sides with some walls and roof. And you can take these pretty much as far as you want to take them. If you're trying to pass a foundation through another foundation, you're going to find it's not going to work on the same level. This is because the actual floor tops of these won't pass through each other. But if I place a floor down just like this, I'll go ahead and get rid of the other foundations. I can move this floor forward. Then we'll put the other foundations back. And now I have something to snap a, a new foundation one floor level above the previous foundation pieces. Patch 1.03 also gives us the ability to rotate droppable objects on a different axis by clicking the left thumbstick or the sprint control. Things like foundations, prefabs, and floors can all be moved over a half step by using small wood floors. By placing a rug or a mat on the floor, you can put another one on top of it and then place an object on top of that rug or mat. You can then put them inside of walls or foundations like this. You can put objects like TVs, refrigerators and things inside of a foundation like this. Now you can also do it with mats, but I came up with a few problems when I did that. When I removed the mats, uh, sometimes they didn't actually stay and they dropped down to the floor. An easy way to make windows is by using light boxes. You can leave them hanging off the edge of a foundation and then just fill in the foundation, or you can actually just separate the foundation and leave a gap for your light boxes to fit like this. Light boxes don't actually offer any ambient light, so you're going to have to add lights behind the light boxes. This is the difference between a lit window and an unlit window. Now you could also just put the lights inside of your foundations like this. So you're going around the garden, you're trying to clear out the area, and then you come across this. You're unable to select it, you can't get rid of it. So if you'll just quick save after you've removed the other plants, you can then reload that quick save and then interact with the plants that you couldn't before, as long as they're not destroyed. Go to the Mass Fusion building, grab a bucket or a fire extinguisher like this, and start scaling the walls backwards all the way up to the top until you get into a little nook like this. Now the power armor is good and it'll prevent you from taking any fall damage, but the interface is clunky for me and this is just much better. The free fall armor, it's the left leg and the right leg and this is going to be really good for when you're building in high places. This is a great way for making caps. I've placed 20 water purifiers at the Sanctuary Hills settlement and after a little while I come back to the workshop and I've got 615 purified water. Now I can take all that and go around to the vendors and start vendoring it. It's probably better if you've invested in them so they'll have more money and you won't have to go around to as many vendors that way.
Excuse me. I take it you wanted to... And the million dollar question, where do you get all that concrete wooden steel? Well, right here at Connie Abernathy. At Abernathy Farms, you can get concrete and wood in stacks of 50. Now, uh, there are other things you, you can get from her, but I'm just going to cover the basics. You can also get concrete here at Daniel Finch, and uh, he sells it by 50 stacks as well. And here at Green at Gray Garden, sells concrete and wood. You can go to Mo at Diamond City Swatters to get more wood. You can go uh, to Myrna and get some steel. And you can come back later that night and talk to Percy at the same place at Diamond City Surplus and get more steel. In order to replace the inventory of all your vendors, all you have to do is just sleep or wait for 48 hours. You can then go right back to them and they'll have all their stock back. I've got a few minutes to browse. Uh huh. By dropping large quantities of guns in your settlement, you can then switch to your build menu and start storing the weapons. You'll notice the size in your size limit will actually decrease. I recommend doing this with weapons that you have a lot of. Don't take every gun out of your bin and then drop them or something like this is going to happen. The more complex an object is, the more space it's going to take up in your size limit. Now, you're just going to have to take my word on it that I have 126 small power generators here. And at the same location, I'll replace those with foundations, and I can actually get 184 foundations. As long as an object doesn't have a direct connection to a power source, your power source will power them infinitely. If you're having trouble dragging a connected power connector into a location, simply place it on a rug or mat and then you can drag it into the same location and have no problems. Building curves can be a little time consuming, but if you line up these corners and then just angle it somewhat, here I'm using two planks, and then do it again. Now I can go ahead and clean up the rest of the floor and move this center piece out. That way I can drop that piece down and then I can put the center right back in. Now I just repeat this process around. I could do it in a complete circle, but in this example I'm just going to use a small arc. Now I can take more floors and place them on the inside of the original arc and then delete the original arc. Using the new curve I can now snap foundations to those, starting from the bottom and then working my way up to the top.
You can easily hide all of your power inside of your walls by placing it in as you build. When placing lights inside of walls, the light won't actually light up the wall that it is inside. It will only light up the walls near that wall. You can simulate ropes, railing, and cables by placing wired connectors inside of other objects. Another change from patch 1.03 that affects building is that wires no longer cost copper. Some objects in Fallout require you to read a magazine in order to build them. If you go right here inside the shack at Lynn Woods, you'll find a Wasteland Survival Guide Issue 4 that allows you to build lawn flamingos. Now if you go to Beantown Brewery, you can find a Picket Fences Magazine Issue 1 that allows you to build, well, Picket Fences. Then going to Hardware Town, there will be another Picket Fences magazine that will allow you to build new lights. Uh, these are going to be the more Space Age style lights. And this is going to be Picket Fences issue number two. Then if you go to Saugus Ironworks, you can go all the way to the end where you fought you know who and there'll be another Pig Fences magazine inside of here this is going to be Pig Fences issue number three and it's going to give you statues then if you go to the combat zone there's going to be Another issue of Picket Fences, this is going to be Picket Fences issue number four, and this is going to give you the potted plants. And then we got one more to go, it's the Weston Water Treatment Plant, and if you just go right up the elevator, make a right, and right here in this room on this desk, you'll find the Picket Fences issue number five, which gives patio furniture. And that's pretty much everything I know related to building in Fallout 4. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. A special thanks to all my subscribers. I hope you liked the video, and more importantly, I hope it helps you when building your own settlements. So till next time.